Hey, welcome to the Fuel the Fight podcast. I'm Lieutenant Colonel Nick Berenger. Uh, this podcast brought by the Graduate Program in Nutrition. Um, so that's, you know, our, our way of getting information out about how you fuel yourself and how to, you know, op- optimally fuel the, the tactical athlete. And today we, we have a very, very special guest. We, we have, I would even say, the, the father of this podcast, uh, Sergeant First Class Christopher Bullis, because, uh, you know, when I first got here to the AMED Center in school, I heard about an individual down at 232 running this Gladiator program, just absolutely crushing it. Um, you know, I, I, w- I would see stuff uh, from uh, Alex Moreau on Mops and Moes um, on Instagram, you know, about 232, just absolutely crushing it. Uh, got to meet this individual. Um, out, outstanding human, uh, doing great things down there, doing the holistic health and fitness program. He had me on his podcast, and from that discussion, this podcast was born. Uh, so, so I, I have to give him credit. Uh, so, without further ado, welcome. Wow, Sergeant Bullis, the father that. of of the of the Fuel the Fight podcast and the Two Three Two podcast, and probably more after that. Yeah, uh, that's exciting. It took a little bit of convincing, though. You were hesitant at first. I was I was hesitant because you know there's there's nothing uh, you know like the the pressure of having somebody point to you behind a camera, uh, but uh, you know, <laughs> that's true. <laughs> as a, that's you intense. know, it's it's a little intense, right? It's a little. It is. Yeah. Uh, but no, I, I'm I'm glad you know we we did it and you know to get this information out. I, I think uh, this is what you know the, the kids are are listening to now. Yeah, this is you how know. they're doing it. This is this is how they're doing it. Yep. Um, so where I want to start off is like, can you tell me your army story? Like what you know. When, what brought you into the army? Um, you know, what was that like all the way to becoming a drill sergeant now here at Johnson? Well, it's been it's been 19 years. Uh, so it started back in 2000, actually 2001. Um, I originally wanted to join the Navy. Uh, so we saw Say that. It ain't so. I know, right? Um, <laughs> it didn't work out. Thankfully. Yeah, thankfully. Um, but uh, but yeah, I, I remember being in um, in Russian history class my senior year, and we watched the towers go down, and it was like that that moment. Like everybody's like, "What do we do?" And you know, um, and there was individuals that were like, you know, "Hey, should go serve." And and there was like that conversation, like, "What are you gonna do when you graduate?" And then it just kind of like became a, almost obvious, like, "All right, this is what I have to do." Um, and uh, and originally wanted to join the Navy, um, but then I got a hernia, and um, the Navy was like, we, we can't take you because you've got this hernia repair and there, whatever. So it was like long to do. And then the Army recruiter called me a couple, like I want to say like maybe like a month later. And he was like, have you ever joined the, uh, thought about joining the Army? And I'm like, uh, yeah, that would be great, but I, I just had a hernia. And he was like, we don't care. <laughs> yeah, we don't care. You know, Navy's yeah. being all picky yeah. for you to be on a boat. Yeah. The Army where you're on the ground <laughs> running around. You're yeah, like, yeah. yeah. We're like, we literally don't care. <laughs> we on. don't care. Just yeah. And, uh, and then I was off to Fort Benning, Georgia, maybe like a couple months later. Um, and, uh, and, yeah, that was in 2003. I did uh, AIT and um, and and combat medic training. I went to Korea, uh, came back from Korea, and then I was in Fort Lewis, where I think that that, like being in Fort Lewis, being in the striker brigade, I think that really solidified it for me. Like, I love the army, and this is where I need to be, and and this is what I need to do. Uh, Deployed uh, for the surge in Baghdad. Um, So we were in Baghdad for for all that fun. Oh, Um, wow. I mean, that that was was an intense time in history for, for the, the yeah. young folks that might not, you know, yes, be uh, that was yeah, that was super intense. We were at the height of Secretarian violence, so the Sunnis and Shias were really at each other's throats. Um, you know, not to be too graphic, but there were bodies in the streets mm-hmm. every day, and and you know, dealing with constant gunfights, and and uh, that was like kind of like um, I think the beginning of the significant threat of IEDs. Mm-hmm. Uh, so there was that going on. A lot of complex. Um, stuff a very dynamic battlefield that's for sure um so that that was like being a be, having the opportunity to be a line medic in that environment was just like the coolest thing for me anyway it was just like this this is it oh that, that's a good thing because yeah. I mean, that's a lot of pressure i mean because how old were you uh i was 23 when i deployed so yeah. 20 yeah 23 in baghdad at the yeah. height of the surge all the yeah. casualties 
what was it the uh, the EFPs was the explosively formed penetrating charges they were yep. utilizing then and all like that and all that mm-hmm. comes with that and you're you're in the thick of it. <clears throat> yep. And that's, in the in the yeah. thick of it. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And um, I was in. I had the absolute pleasure to be part of a, a calf squadron, 114 calf, um, and um, love the calf. The experiences that you get in a calf squadron are like nothing else in the army. I mean, no offense to infantry guys, but. I mean, it's just cool. You get to wear a cowboy hat. And I was about spurs. to say, you like the little hat and spurs. Absolutely. That was it. That was where they had you. Like, hat and spurs, <laughs> sold. Yeah, so, yeah. Yeah. So you, you have that bravado and, and all that. So um, I really appreciated that. And, uh, and yeah, it was it, like we had people all over Baghdad, uh, troops all over Baghdad. And, uh, and being in the striker is such an amazing platform in which to fight off of and operate off of. Um, I mean, even as a medic. Like, I don't know that there is a better Kazovac platform um, than the Striker. So, ob- obviously a lot of fun uh, and didn't have too many issues like the Humvee guys had. So Oh, yeah. A little, yeah. little, little more protection. Yeah, yeah a little, little, little bit more, more protection, a yeah. little bit more room to operate in, too. So, like, you know, when you drag a casualty inside of the Striker, you've got – you can lay that person full out and on the, on the floor of the Striker do your work. So, um, again, uh, just – an awesome time and great experience uh and then i just got stuck we just kept deploying um because it was just the thing that everybody did um in that time frame is just we were back to back to back uh so did another deployment to iraq then immediately went to afghanistan uh and then left fort lewis to come to be an instructor uh or an sgl small group leader at the advanced leader course at the nco academy here uh, did three years there, then went to become a platoon sergeant in Fort Bliss, um, and uh, again in the CAF, which a super awesome experience. Uh, and then came here to be a drill sergeant. So that's kind of the whole thing that brought me here to being a drill sergeant. Now that's that's a lot of lot of great ex- experience, especially as a yeah. medic. Yeah, coming into this. Yes. Um, so so what led you to H two F? Like how did how did that come about? Uh, so kind of in bits and pieces. Um, so I, I think, I think it's pretty obvious that everybody, uh, when they enter in the military, get that like, uh, physical fitness experience. And, um, as a medic, uh, especially in the beginning when I was a line medic, there's that heavy, like, uh, influence to be like in real good shape because you're the guy on the ground that's got to carry everybody and you got to carry all of your equipment and you got to also keep up with the line troops. So, um, I had a platoon sergeant that just like had it in his head that the the line medics were going to be the best version of whatever who you were supporting like if you were going to be a line medic you were going to be the best calf scout and by the way you're going to be a line medic Mm. Um, that was just his mentality so when he put us out into um, troops to support platoons it was with the understanding that you're going to learn everything there is to know about 19 deltas and obviously you got to be in really good shape to do that um so that was like the original catalyst like all right i gotta be in really good shape um and then as things started to evolve and um i started to learn a little bit more about resilience um and mental uh health um dealing with some post-traumatic stress issues uh that helped me get into more of like um spiritual and mental health aspects and when I got into those domains and started to understand or create an, my own understanding of those things, I started to realize how everything connects. Um, and it was when I was in the NCO Academy that um, the AMED rolled out the performance triad. Yeah. So you're talking about sleep, nutrition, and activity. Mm-hmm. And that was when I was like, kind of had that aha moment about sleep, first of all, because like when you're operating on the line you know you'll, yeah you'll sleep and you're dead <laughs> um yeah and you're like radio watch and and guard and all that stuff it, it, yeah so it's like you'll sleep when you're dead um yeah, but plenty um, of ribbits <laughs> yeah ribbits for days just chugging and you're good to go um but uh but yeah so that that was when i realized that uh you know hey uh, sleep has a significant impact on your performance uh, especially your, when you're an instructor everybody's looking at you and you're teaching all day you really got to be on it um so that was like, all right, sleep, and then I got to make sure that I hydrate. And then that's kind of where it all, like, clicked. 
Um, and then what I got to be in a drill sergeant is when I realized how much structure is required. Because when you're a drill sergeant, your day, like your life is a drill sergeant. Like you really don't have an opportunity to really have much of a social life or anything like that um, because you're just so consumed by your job. So then it became like super imperative that there was structure to um, everything that I did. So like I had and my nutrition for the day was I brought to work with me. So like everything that I needed, so there wasn't any opportunity for me to be like, oh, well, I haven't eaten. I should just run to the PX really quick and get Taco Bell. I didn't want to do that um, because I know how bad that is for you. Um, so in order to be the best drill sergeant that I could be, I was bringing food to work. It's like everything that I needed for the day, calorie intake was in this bag. And if it, if it wasn't in this bag, I wasn't eating it is basically what I was, uh, I was telling myself. And, um, and then what was really cool is the soldier medics were kind of like cluing in on like, oh, hey, that's Drill Sergeant Bullis. He's like super health nut. Um, and I got to talk about that with them. And I'd be like, this is why I do what I do. So as you, as a young 68, soon to be 68 whiskey, um, these are the type of things that you need to be thinking about in order to optimize yourself uh, and, um, and be better as a, as a soldier medic. So that was cool. No, that, that's great. And you kind of covered, I was, I was going to ask about kind of your, your, your fitness, you know, uh, aha moment. Um, you know, one of the things I, I appreciate, you know, with, with your story and, and then with you is, you know, you, you're not a spring chicken. You, you've been around the block a few yeah. times. So I, I, I think that, that's also important because, because we know, I mean, I'm 42. So I, you know, I, I know too, is like, it, it gets harder as you go along. And those that have maintained a high level of fitness, obviously know what they're doing because because anybody you know you can get away with a lot of silly stuff when you're 20 let's be honest you sure can right yeah, yeah. you know right you sure can. Um, so so now I, I find myself you know looking uh to the to the older folks and being like oh whatever that guy's doing it's, it's working because yeah. he's, he's still you know getting at, after it um so you know with that being said what are, what are some of the biggest mistakes you see these young soldiers making out there uh, I, I think biggest mistakes probably it's tough. It's like tied between sleep, uh, poor sleep, hygiene, and nutrition. Um, I, I think th those two are probably tied for number one. Um, I think given technology and the things that, that the soldiers have access to, um, it, it, it seriously interferes with their ability to, to sleep well at night. Uh, so you're on your cell phone. It's like right here. Uh, up in your face while you're in bed and you're just like scrolling through it. So like all of that is just like in your face uh, and you're being stimulated by that. So you don't realize like, yeah, you might feel relaxed, but your brain isn't that running through all the um, uh, processing of what you're looking at and, you know, all dopamine and all the chemicals that are being produced. It interferes with your ability to relax. So you're doing that and then you're like, well, why haven't I fallen asleep yet? And then next thing you know, it's like, three hours later and you're only getting like four hours of sleep a night and obviously everything that comes from that and uh, expecting your body to perform well the next day. Um, so there's that. Um, and then uh, and then just poor nutrition choices and just realizing that um, or, or not planning appropriately really. Uh, so just like allowing the day to get ahead of you or, or get away from you and then realizing like, oh my God, I haven't ate. So I'm going to jump on something quick. And then that quick thing is like Domino's or Taco Bell and, and stuff like that. Yeah, sure. It satiates you and makes you feel good in the moment because it satisfies your hunger, but it's not doing you any favors in the long term. Um, and, you know, obviously you would be able to tell us all about that. Well, yeah. Well, and then, and then the fact that tying it with sleep is, is a lot of times, you know, the, the research has shown when we don't get enough sleep, we look to food. And yeah. So then it, it triggers the overeating and yes. yeah, that, that kind yeah. of thing. Yeah. I, I learned that, uh, that uh, tired brain wants sugar. Yeah. And like you find yourself like just really like when you're tired, you're just like, I just want like cake or candy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I don't like, I didn't understand what that was all about and then figured out like, oh, wow, well, that's because you're tired. You're tired. And then that also lowers your willpower too a little yeah. bit. So you're just, you know. Yeah, that's yeah. true. So, so yeah. So I could say, you know, sleep and then, you know, the poor nutrition choices from it. Um, you talked a little bit about technology, and so I'm, I'm trying to get uh, more spun up on that. Um, 
you know, on the gram. So, so what, what fitness influencers, cause I know you're, you're social media savvy. Um, I, I looked at you. Yeah. I looked at you, you know, <laughs> And so I know that this is what the young soldiers are doing. This is where they're getting a lot of their information from. Yeah. Um, as, as I talk to them, even even my students. What fitness influencers do you follow on Instagram, if any? Uh, so I, I follow a, a bunch because there's so many out there. Uh, and you can get it on like a rabbit hole depending on like what your genre is. So like a, I follow a lot of CrossFit athletes mm -hmm. um, because cro I feel like CrossFit athletes do a really good job of putting like a wide variety of stuff out there. Not only like CrossFit programming and like, um, uh, you know, exercises, but like prehab stuff um, and then uh, the squat doctor. Uh, or Squat University, I squat think. Un yeah, Squat University, yeah. I think I know that one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, like, especially being involved in a, a, a rehab program, um, wanting to know and understand a little bit more about how the body moves uh, and body mechanics and, and what to do from a rehab perspective, because, I, I mean, I'm not a physical therapist, but here I was handed this opportunity to rehab soldiers. So I was like, all right, well, I need – crash courses and and um and yeah he does these videos that are like maybe like two minutes long that give you basic rundown of um of everything you need to know about a certain injury like if the hips or uh, hip mobility is an issue or you know here's some exercises to strengthen if you're having problems with your deadlift or if your certain form or technique looks like this try this and and that was super beneficial um and he's got i think he's got a book out too but uh I think, yeah, but um, but yeah, it, that would be a, a, a go-to for, for just understanding how your body's supposed to move mm -hmm. and understanding good technique. Um, but but like I said, there's like tons of good stuff out there. Yeah, no, I've, I've started to look. You know, the rule I, I use, and maybe again, as, as a more seasoned athlete, you'll appreciate this. If, if an individual, if a fitness influencer, pretty much if, if they're under the age of 36, don't follow them. <laughs> I don't follow. Them. I don't because because like, I'm, yeah. just, I'm like I'm like maybe you've gotten away with you know, but yeah. it's like I, I look and like all the individuals I kind of look to are like forty and up, fifty and up, um, like uh, you know a guy like Stu Smith, like you know who I'm talking about. I don't know. No, uh, uh, Navy Seal mm -hmm. still trains uh, future Navy Seals at the uh, the Naval Academy. And I mean, he's, he's got to be in his fifties. I, I don't know, but like still like crushing it. Like every morning, like he's posting, like out there working out, like still doing. So to me, I'm like, either he's a mutant or he knows what he's doing. I'm going <laughs> to assume he knows what he's doing. Right. He's still, you know, cause yeah. he has, he, you'll see like a day he'll just like post. It's like, I'm doing mobility today. I'm doing a light, you know, you know, a cool down, you know, that sort of thing, recovery yeah. day. Um, so, so that's, that's my rule of thumb. So I didn't know if you had like a filter. So that's why I was, uh, I actually, um, I, I'm more into, uh, kind of mindset influencers, mm -hmm. uh, individuals that are out there just like super disciplined that are just always pushing themselves. So like David Goggins is, phenomenal. Was about, yeah, that's the... um, and, and Jocko Willink, he's yeah. another really good one too. Um, but like, I really feel like David Goggins is like tapped into something super special. Um, and, uh, and whatever it is, like I, I'll listen to something that he says and I'm like, you're right. I'm not doing enough. I need to go do something else like right now. Um, and, and that's, that's been, uh, something that I've been getting more interested in is, is that mindset. Like, what do we need to do in order to tap into our, like to, or, or what do we need to tap into to become more disciplined? so that we can get after the things that, that we need to get after. And, and not necessarily just fitness, but like your day-to-day -day routine. Um, what do you need to do to add more structure? So that's something that I'm really interested in right now. So that's more like, you know, I would, I would tie this into to kind of the mindfulness in, in those practices. And, and so how have you incorporated that, especially with these young soldiers, I, I think, you know, that could be beneficial. How, how have you incorporated that with the Gladiator program? How do you guys get after mindfulness? Uh, well, um, <clears throat> we were incredibly blessed to uh, have worked with uh, Melissa Aguirre, who was um, originally at the Vogel Resiliency Center. Mm -hmm. And uh, when we went up there to because I wanted to bring yoga to the program because it's it's a, such a really good way to like move your body. And, and if you understand movement as medicine and how like um, you get into um, flow state and understanding um, 
how powerful yoga is, I, I, I knew like, you know, hey, our students would benefit from this. So we brought her down and uh, she had a ton of really good ideas and she knew and understood the doctrine and the direction that the army was going and wanted to say like, uh, and she was like, I want to bring mindfulness to our yoga practices. I'm like, that sounds amazing. Um, so <clears throat> what we ended up doing is, is doing like an intention, like setting the intention for the practice. So just having everybody understand like, hey, this is what we want you to focus on, whether it be like, um, uh, I think she has a sleep practice, like helping understand sleep, uh, understanding like uh, a hip movement, um, core development, like whatever the intention of the practice was, this is what you want to focus on. So as you go through the movements, that's what you're focused mo mainly on. So it's kind of like you get into that meditative um, state a little bit. You're, you're trying to declutter your mind uh, and focus solely on on that one thing. Uh, and then after you get into this um, down regulation is what you would call it. And you just sit there in stillness with just the understanding of what you just experienced to just kind of like relax and basically get ready for whatever it is the next thing is. So you're not bringing too much energy or not enough energy, but just making sure that you spend that moment with, um, and just be mindful and just pay attention on purpose. Have you seen it? So I know you usually wear your, your whoop, like, have you, did you track your diet? I'm curious, like when you're, when you're doing these exercises, could you see like physiologically your heart rate or your breathing rate? Did you track yes. that? Yeah. So, um, yeah. So like heart rate goes down significantly when you're in those relaxed states, um, and, uh, in recovery. Um, so what I noticed, uh, I don't, I don't unfortunately do whoop anymore. Um, but, um, but I, I learned a lot in the year that I had it. Um, and, uh, understanding what I needed to do in order to be better at recovery was important. Um, I knew that I was going to get strain like, right. regardless, you know, yeah, if you yeah. do CrossFit every day, you're going to get enough strain in your body. Um, but, um, but maximizing the amount of recovery, because again, we're not spring chickens, 38. Yeah. So, uh, I got to be mindful about how well I recover my body so that I can continue to do the things that I want. So when I spent about like 10 minutes, just like chilling and allowing myself to breathe, um, that's when I was able to get a lot more bang for my buck in terms of recovery, especially at night. Like when you get ready to go to bed, be intentional about how you go to sleep, um, and just spend as much time in, uh, in like a relaxed state, whether that is like listening to meditative music, uh, which I got this Spotify playlist, um, yoga meditation. It's like the first one you click on. Um, just, okay, I have to look at this. Yeah, uh, and uh, and I play that on my Google uh, uh, Google Home device, so it plays on like all the speakers, and that's just like as I'm going through my my routine, my nighttime routine of like getting everything ready for the day, the next day, and uh, getting myself ready for bed. Um, just listening to this music helps me kind of focus on what I'm doing in the moment. So it's it's kind of meditative because you don't want to think too much about what you have going on outside of the moment just to kind of like declutter your brain so you can be more relaxed to get a better night's sleep. Are there any specific breathing techniques that you use before you go to bed or anything like that? Is that uh, some folks kind of doing that to reset? I didn't know if that Yes, was... I've definitely experiment, experimented with, with a bunch, but just like five seconds in, f deep five second, deep diaphragmatic mm -hmm. breath in, fill your belly, and then five seconds out, uh, and just do that rinse repeat for a good five minutes, and you'll feel it. Like you, like all the stress leaves your neck and your shoulders, and you just kind of like sink into whatever posture, pillow, or bed, or whatever you're sitting in. Um, like just thinking about it right now, it just like, you, you go feel. on that comfortable couch oh, we have here. Just yeah. <laughs> just, <laughs> no, that, that's good. Yeah. I find, I, I try to keep it, you know, dark. I, I try to do all those things with kids. It, it makes it a little dicey yeah. sometimes, yeah. but, uh, but, but yeah. yeah. And then the other thing for me is like, it has to be cold, which is like, yes. um, sometimes a challenge with the spouse, but, uh, Same. But yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I actually have a pad under underneath my bed that that's filled with water that cools. Oh, that's so I I lay on that so it it'll actually lower my you know and I've tracked it on my aura ring like it'll lower my body temperature and nice. so that's that's kind of a workaround if uh, 
you know, if, if your significant other doesn't allow you to turn down the thermostat to 68, I found. So. <laughs> yeah. 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 I've been able to achieve 68. Okay. Now, so that's, that's, that's like, that's, that was a huge good. win. <laughs> that, was a, yeah. that was a big win. But she's over there with a heating blacket <laughs> and like two sure. other blackets <laughs> and a hoodie and everything. So as long as she's comfortable, I, yeah, it yeah. Six, yeah. But I'm, I'm the same way. If I can get it to 68, I'm good. Um, you know, if you were king for a day, kind of with this holistic health and fitness, if you were the director or whatever, you know, are there any changes you would make or is there any changes in the Army overall that, that you would make in terms of holistic health and fitness or, or things that maybe we could, you know, do better or get after? Uh, yeah, I, I would honestly probably uh, try to attack more of the, the spiritual domain. Mm. Um, Reading FM 7-22, there really isn't a whole lot uh, in Chapter 10, um, which is spiritual readiness. Uh, so it, it doesn't really help NCOs or young leaders, like, get after that domain, which is, like, um, when I had Chaplain Vandress mm -hmm. on the podcast, she explained that your uh, spirituality is the core of who you are, uh, and it... And it uh, forms your character, your identity, and, and everything that, that is you. Um, so if, if I was king for a day, I would want to help individuals that are j like all throughout the spectrum, uh, in all aspects of, of uh, Army life, helping them understand and appreciate their soldier identity, what that means to them, uh, and why it's important to um, maintain that that the strength that you have um, to maintain a good character which you know um, influences your decisions uh, strengthens your values uh, and of, of course like if, uh, if you're mindful about like the soldier's creed and everything that means and what it stands for it can help drive people to make better fitness decisions like understanding what it means to stand ready to deploy, engage, and destroy enemies in the United States of America in close combat. Mm. Like, if you really, like, think about that. Yeah, that makes like, you, I'm going to go work out right now. Yeah, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, oh, man, I'm not ready. <laughs> yeah, I got to right. go. Um, so if you, if, if soldiers understood and appreciated their soldier identity uh, and all that that means, um, I think that, uh, that we would be a more capable and ready force. No, I love that. Yeah, soldier identity. And, and I never thought of that in terms of the, the, the spiritual piece, connecting to that. You know, my, my thing was always uh, my little call to arms. Um, because especially, I mean, we're both medical. We can say this. Uh, you know, sometimes our, our some of our medical folks don't always, uh, you know, they, they might forget that a little bit, right? Yeah, you know? A little bit, yeah. Uh, I'll leave it at that. <laughs> and, and so, you know, my, my challenge would always be like, hey, you're either an asset or a liability. It's yeah. binary. There, there's, there's, there's no in between. So, you know, what you're doing yep. today, like physically fit, or, are you going to be an asset or you, are you a liability? Yeah. Um, but I like the, the soldier identity. I might have to use that there. <laughs> Feel free. Absolutely. Yeah, I like it. I like it. Um, what advice would you give, you know, the young private bullets that you know now? Like if you could go back in time and say, hey, oh, this is this is what you need to start doing now that I oh, wish I would have. So much. Uh, oh, man. All the things. <laughs> all the things. Um, I mean, just patience. Uh, I was very impatient and like wanted results right away. Um, understanding that um, that that good things take time, I think it would probably be the biggest takeaway. Um, you know, because when you're a kid, you want everything now. Right. Um, so when you're, when you're training for something, you, you, know, you expect the results right away. Um, you know, when, when you're trying to achieve something and you, you attempt it, uh, and you don't see those results right away, you give up um, because, you know, you're not, you're not seeing it, you're not being patient. Um, so yeah, that's, that's probably would be the biggest takeaway. Um, just be patient, trust the process. Um, and, uh, and you know, good things will come if, if you just keep working, putting in the steps and just keep going over and over and just maintaining that discipline. That's powerful advice. Hopefully everybody's, you know, you got your new year's resolution. You just heard it. From yeah, the man, there patience, is. trust the process, mm -hmm. do this day in and day out. Yep. You know, like that's, 
Yeah, you know? no, that, that's great advice. And, mm-hmm. and uh, I, I think I would tell myself similar um, <laughs> advice if I could go back in terms of, uh, of, of that. Um, you know, now I'm a 65 Charlie dietitian, mm-hmm. right? How much interaction have you had with dietitians, and is, is there anything you think dietitians in the Army could do better? And don't, you know, don't worry about offending me. I won't. Uh, <laughs> well, honestly, I really haven't had much experience, uh, mm-hmm. honestly, with dietitians. My first uh, interaction was when Holistic Health and Fitness program uh, went to Fort Bliss. Uh, so we had a holistic health and fitness team, and uh, we didn't actually have a dietitian. I want to say that we had a nutritionist. Um, I don't know. We, we only had like a handful of, of meetings um, before I took off to come here. Um, but um, from what I understand of how, like the intent, um, because I talked to Major Ramator and mm-hmm. yeah, she was a yeah. dietitian. She kind of explained it on the podcast, like what the intent is. I, I think it's great. Um, and I think that for what we're trying to get after in 232, like having a dietitian um, to, to, to just do general information, like, hey, this is what you need to do in order to fuel your body to be better at 68 whiskey things. Uh, and then having the opportunity for soldiers to come and do one-on-ones so that allows them to understand where nutrition plays into their fitness goals, I think is, is awesome. Um, because holistic health and fitness is individ- individualized. Um, and, and, and bringing uh, dietitians to the, the front line, um, helping drive better nutrition outcomes right there, I think is, is awesome. Um, and I, uh, anybody that's really trying to optimize our soldiers uh, is, is like whatever that looks like right now uh, is probably way better than what it was before when all we knew of dietitians are like, oh, they're in a hospital somewhere. Yeah. Doing yeah. some sort of patient meal plan or whatever. Been there. Uh, no, sure that was a, a, that was a, I, I tell my students now they don't know how lucky they are because when I when I came in the army as a dietitian that was it you know it was you're you're in a hospital and yeah. so now these opportunities to get out there and then it, well and then every line uh, soldier I came in contact with they didn't know what a dietitian was they didn't even they're like oh we got those in the army that was always the <laughs> yeah so so it's great yeah. that at least you've you've had some limited interaction uh, with it and then hopefully with H two F that that'll uh, that'll increase. You know, being a drill sergeant, that's such a unique and and maybe, you know, the most iconic job in the Army. Like, when I think about it, like, when you think about movies. Yeah. Right? Like, any any military movie that involves basic training, like the drill sergeant, that's that's the character you remember. Yeah. Um, And and so you're, you're that. Right, like you were, you were this, like those those soldiers. Well, you probably can remember your drill sergeant. Well, yes, I do. Right, but the, like, like the immediate thought based of the movie is this Full Metal Jacket. Oh yeah, and I'm yeah, like, I was not, you're not, you're not, not full him. Metal. <laughs> it's not Full Metal Jacket, people. Uh, it's not, uh, you know. Uh, although there might be days you feel like going, but no. <laughs> yes. Um, but but no, you know, it's 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 such a unique position. In terms of yeah, I, you know, folks go throughout their army career and, and names and faces kind of get blurred, but everybody I've talked to like they they remember their drill sergeant mm-hmm. like twenty years, twenty five, thirty, you know they they remember that drill sergeant. Mm-hmm. So so very few folks are ever going to get a chance to, to do that job. So I kind of wanted to, you know, I, I'm curious. It's like hey, what's what's a day in the life of a drill sergeant like? Like what's that? You know, for those of us who will never be a drill sergeant, man, just, um, just we just have the movies. To go yeah, off just of. the movies. <laughs> uh, well, being an AIT drill sergeant is uh, is very different from being a basic training drill sergeant. We're, whereas in basic training, you are in those soldiers' lives, twenty four hours a day, seven days a week. Um, you are like you're, the soldiers are immersed with their drill sergeant presence. Um, Whereas in AIT, we get them in the morning and then at night. Um, so when they go to school, we don't really have any interactions with them unless they're out of school for whatever reason. So, um, so in in those moments, it becomes like if you if you really like understand and are passionate about what your responsibility is, it becomes critical to maximize what you have with those soldiers. Um, so understanding that you're what they're looking to like you're the role model for them uh like that's the job right uh there's a reason why we're the top 10 percent of 
whatever MOS or, or whatever that like that there's a reason for that because we're what right looks like or we're supposed to represent mm -hmm. what right looks like so um, you know you're you're always wanting to be on your 100% um, because you know there is there's a soldier out there in formation that's been like man I really want to be like drill sergeant bullets when I grow up and and that's a it's a lot of pressure. It is. That's a it, lot of pressure. It's an man. intense responsibility yeah. um, because you're responsible for uh, um, essentially building what that soldier wants to become, um, uh, and and how they're modeling their presence and and uh, how they're modeling their decision making and 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 how they're formulating formulating their soldier identity too. Uh, I want to embody all the values that Drill Sergeant Bullis does, so. I can be like him, um, and again, that's intense. Uh, so you just want to be as locked in as possible, and just be the best representative that you can be for the U.S. Army, so that you're creating awesome soldiers when they get to their unit. Yeah, so you don't have folks, you know, from from the unit calling you up, being like, "Hey, yeah, <laughs> hey, from, yeah. <laughs> yeah, from your old units." Is has that ever happened, or have you have you? had that moment where like one of the soldiers you trained up went to a unit where you knew somebody there and you're like you know yes uh yeah. it has happened because i you know i had an opportunity yeah. to be a platoon sergeant for for a little bit before i became a drill sergeant so i knew a lot of of people in that like my peer group mm -hmm. was platoon sergeant so um i had a, a platoon sergeant buddy of mine who was at the 101st that received a soldier of ours and it was a less than ideal situation so i had to be like hey in advance i know that this dude's coming to you so like you might want to like work on work him on a him bit. well that, yeah well at least gave me that the, the heads up and uh yeah well what, what's sad though and, and this is and this is something i i try to remind myself to do is it's human nature right whenever there's a mess up we're quick to so you know if, if I get sent a, a bad soldier what I seem is not an ideal soldier from from you know Sergeant Bowles I'm an, I'm quick to call you up and be like yeah what is this what is going on <laughs> but you could send yeah. me ten good ones yeah and I never say anything yeah you know so so I I, I even have to look at that at like my behavior and like be like hey whenever you know something good happens let that person know because <laughs> you know probably in their life they only hear about you know the bad so I'm That's sure a good point. hopefully people have called you about the good soldiers and if, if not shame on them you should call him if any <laughs> if any platoon sergeant right now that knows this man you've got one of his soldiers foxtrot 232. yeah yeah foxtrot uh, 232 call him and, and, and say thank you thank you for training my soldier um because yeah you probably don't get enough of that so no we we did have some good ones um and um and now uh you know because uh some the good ones want to reach out Right. Uh, to like thank you for for what you did and, and everything like that, which is which is really cool because then you get to see the benefit of what you the work that you put in. Um, so there've been a couple of individuals that have reached out that were like, you know, hey, like uh, there is an H two F program here, uh, and I know that that's like your thing. So like, how do I become more involved and and um, you know how do I influence my platoon to be better at fitness and stuff like that so that's really cool and that that happens every once in a while like we maintain the the gladiator instagram page and there's tons of so former soldier medics that are reaching out and be like hey like i really loved what i got in the gladiator program how do i implement it here how do i continue to do those things in, in my own um uh for my own personal fitness goals um so that's cool and we get we get a lot of that um, oh yeah no yes yeah, Alex Moreau at, at, at the Mops, and Mo, you know, he talks about your program as being a model for, for the Army. And, and I know he's, he's well-versed, came from that, came from the fitness school mm -hmm. out now. But, uh, you know, that, that's high praise. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Uh, you know, and, and so that's, that's pretty awesome. Um, and if, if you're not following Mops and Moe's, you, you should. It's, yeah. it's great, great it, information. It is. It's very, very yeah. good information. He does and, a really and he makes job. it so pretty. I still don't he know does. he makes it. I don't, very artistic yeah. eye, you know. Yeah, he went to West Point. That's probably it. <laughs> so maybe. <clears throat> what uh, you know? We talked a little bit about being a drill sergeant. So I, I think I, I was going to ask you, what's the best thing? I'm, I'm assuming the best thing is what you just said. Maybe hearing back from those soldiers, or <sighs> I, yes, that is good. Mm -hmm. um, but I I think it's the immediate appreciation that you get um that aha moment when it like all clicks um I, I think that that is 
pretty awesome too. Like when you when you working with soldiers to help them understand like what the army is and what it's all about and what you need to do in order to be successful. And then you get that person from that might've been in like the back of the formation in the beginning, step out to the front and become the platoon guide and is just like being this amazing leader of presence, brand new in the army. It's like, yes, (laughs) we did it. Um, well, I mean, they did it too, but like helping bring that out of them is, and then seeing it, play out is something that's been really cool too Um, yeah yeah so that that's that's a big win and then what's what's the most challenging thing about it uh i would say being that person that they need in the worst moments Mm. um and maintaining the emotional energy that is required to receive all of them unloading um I think that's the hardest part. And I think that the Army doesn't do enough to prepare drill sergeants for it, whether it is like, um, I I mean, I really wouldn't even know how to prepare people other than saying like, hey, heads up, you know, you you might have a soldier that has had a terrible run at life Mm. that just has a triggering event and you are literally the only person that is available for them to talk to and they're going to unload all of that trauma on you. And you're going to need to know what to say in that moment to, to make sure that that soldier's okay. And that's a lot. Um, yeah. There's, like, I had a bunch of conversations with a buddy of mine, a uh, former drill sergeant, um, and um, kind of like an empath, just like you know, everything that, mm-hmm. that, that somebody brought as far as emotions, he would receive, and, and me too, just like, you get heavy. Uh, and you don't really know what to do with that. And that could probably be, that to, that to me is probably the hardest part of the job. When somebody comes in and says, you know, hey, my, my dad beat me and uh, I've had a run of, like horrible run of life. I was homeless before this and now I have like no idea what to do. And now I failed my EMT and, and like my world is now falling apart. Like, what do you do in that moment? Like, ooh. And, and you're the the person. Yeah, and you're and the then, guy. Well, and, and then you know that's not just one, that's one individual out of how many like soldiers or you uh, might be four hundred and twenty uh, responsible. Company, yeah. No, you know that that's something. Uh, again, that's why I'm so glad we're we're having this conversation. I wanted to touch a bit on the drill sergeant because that is so unique in in terms of you got four hundred people that could potentially be be dumping you know i don't want to use dumping but but you're you're getting those problems kind of you know set at your feet um and as you alluded to you know that's a lot to carry because also you know you're human you you probably have sometimes things going on in your life that's stressful and stuff and so now you have that on top of that so you know I, i didn't even think about this is there uh an outlet for drill sergeants is is there some sort of program or built in or do they talk to you about that drill sergeant school of like hey you know this is uh recommended practices or people to talk to or um i i'm nothing very specific Mm. but i i i don't want to sound like i'm drinking the kool-aid a lot but like the holistic health and fitness (laughs) is that model and is that program um and uh and and the reason why i attribute my success um, being a drill sergeant, I attribute it to my health routine, like just being super thoughtful and intentional about everything that I did. Like I need at least seven hours of sleep. And if I can't get it, I need to bank it so that I'm okay for the next couple of days. And, um, I need to have all the food that I need to have. And I need to, um, maintain a, like a mindfulness practice. So when emotional situations happen, I can deregulate and detach and and then get back into what I need to do uh, to be more focused and optimized Um, so yeah I think I think it's probably coming Uh, I know that we have the drill sergeant resilience program so like every year drill sergeants have an opportunity to take a week off and they just like don't really do much Uh, and then depending on whoever you're brigade, battalion, um, senior drill sergeant is whoever runs that program. It's responsible for coordinating resources and classes and stuff like that to help you deal with and and kind of unload a little bit of that stuff because yeah, it's, um, for, for most drill sergeants, it's, it's rough two years. 
No, that's I, I knew it was intense, but I never thought of that. And and again, I, thanks so much for sharing that because a lot of us would uh, would never know that. And and yeah, you, you know what you said about holistic health and fitness. No, I, I like that because um, even going back to like you know Goggins or some of the the mental resilience piece of it, uh, I, I think the research shows, and even from you know personal experiences, it's easier to be mentally tough when you're fit. <laughs> you know, like when you're, yeah. it's, it's, it, it kind of, it, it helps with that. Um, mm-hmm. Whereas, you know, moments where you're out of shape or stuff like that, that, that little, maybe I should just quit, you know, kind of comes in yeah. uh, a little bit more loudly um, mm-hmm. than when, hey, in your peak top physical condition, you know, even when the going gets tough, uh, you kind of have that, that extra drive. So yeah. Yeah, that's, yeah, if you're not taking care of yourself and your nutrition and, and everything like that, it's it's really easy to, to just, just let roll it go. over. Yep. Yeah. Uh, any uh, book or, or reading recommendations you, you have for folks in, in, in regards to holistic health and fitness? Any resources you found that you're like, hey, young soldiers, you should mm-hmm. be looking at these? Man, um, I recently read uh, Sebastian Younger's Tribe. Uh, and that's not necessarily holistic health and fitness, um, but but it it helps understand the community uh, and why that's so important. Um, so I'm getting ready to to retire. I got less than a year, um, well, a year left in the army, and um, and thinking about that, like the community that I've been able to surround myself with, um, has been pivotal to my success uh and and when you looking at in the future like not having that um Mm. you know that that's that was like a ooh, what do i do um so reading a and and reading that book tribe helped me better understand why community is important and and why i needed to be seeking it out and and then also um He's also the guy that did Restrepo, mm-hmm. uh, which is an amazing documentary, and and um, and you just like, I, I really like that stuff. Again, like soldier identity type things, like what format or what um, uh, what encompasses my soldier identity, and and really putting a lot of that into. Um, uh, reading material, putting that in, in the efforts into that and figure out what that is. No, that's, that's great. Yeah. I've seen Restrepo have not read tribe. Now it is on my list. I read war. I think you wrote, right. Unger. Yeah. Also wrote war. Uh, but, but that's a great book. I love, you know, you mentioned community and about having that and surrounding yourself with that because also I, I feel, you know, kind of a message out there, uh, for, for young soldiers is that works both ways. So also be careful of the community, you know, look at the community you're surrounding yourself with and, yeah. and what they're doing because you become the average of that as well. So, yeah. you know, choosing that uh, community um, correctly, but then it, it is really important. And, and I have have, you know, uh, friends who've gotten out of the army. And just like you said, it's, it is that struggle sometimes that folks aren't prepared for. And you have this identity, this soldier identity that's been your identity, you know, I'm you know, sergeant first class Chris Bullis. I'm a soldier. I'm a drill sergeant. I'm a medic. I'm this, and then the day you you walk out of the army, that's that's no longer. You know, you guys. What do I do? And, 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 in, and in some aspects, you know, not to be over. You know, the, the, the civilian sector, especially like looking for a job. My wife went through that process. Is like they don't care. Yeah. Like, like I mean, you know, hey, thank you for your service, whatever. But that's not going to get you a job. No. It's you know, and I feel like some soldiers are in that too. And so there's this thing. So it's great that you're you know, that you're prepared for that and you're, you're mentally, you know, kind of, um, already planning. Um, and, and so that's, that's good. Yeah. You need to stay sharp. Yeah. Uh, where, where do you see these young soldiers going for nutrition advice? Like what's, what's their go-to? I mean, honestly, uh, I, I, I think from what I've seen is that they, they, they see in, in others, what they want in themselves and they'll seek out those people in their peer group. I think that is probably the most influence that they get. Um, uh, but I mean, some soldiers will see me cause I like, I, for like a while, I always had like a smoothie at work and they'll be like, man, what's like, what is it? Like, it looks green. It's look, looks terrible. Um, so the, like, and then that would initiate a conversation. That was kind of like the point. Um, if I have a smoothie out there, then I get to talk about how chia seeds benefit gut health and all that stuff. Um, uh, so, uh, th- that happens too. Um, 
but uh, I mean, there's just unfortunately there's almost too much information out there. Um, so you you kind of become consumed by the fact that like oh there's too much, so it becomes intimidating, and you're not really sure where to go. Um, and then but, you just go to Taco Bell. No. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and then you're just like, well, screw it. I don't understand. Um, but but yeah. that does actually happen. And that's a really, really good point because a lot of people don't know how to prepare food for themselves. Uh, and they don't know what to eat and how to plan uh, um, like, a, like what a good diet is for them. Um, and there's so many um, – uh, fad diets, and we talked about that on our podcast, um, and it's not necessarily the ones that are most beneficial for, for soldiers, and of course you explained why keto is not necessarily the greatest idea um, for people to explore, but uh, that's the kind of influences they get. Um, so a lot of it, to me, for me, my, my perspective was trial and error, and just trying to figure out what works best for me. Um, I did vegan for a little bit, that was fun. Uh, learned a lot, uh, a lot of awareness there, and then uh, paleo, and then um, a little bit more of a, um, uh, of a kind of keto, but like intermittent, mm -hmm. but um, and then intermittent fasting and all that stuff, and you just gotta play with it, uh, and be oh, like aware and feel it. Like okay, I I had um, uh, so every morning I, I wake up, I have I have greens and uh, collagen coffee with MCT oil. And I know for a fact that that sets my day up for success. And that's medium chain triglycerides. So I just get, yeah, MCT. In case you people want to know. Yeah. Of course, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that, thank no, you. No, no, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. But, but yeah, like I, I, yeah. I feel sharper. I yeah. feel more focused. Uh, clarity is, and that's super important. Like, mm -hmm. cause when you're a drill sergeant getting ready to lead PT, um, you, you need to be locked in because you can't be the guy that forgets the next exercise in the prep drill. Right. Or you're not like, a good look. No, not a good look at all. Um, so yeah, that's that's super important. So, uh, and I forget where I was going with that, but but oh yeah. So know yourself and know what works best for you, and and play with those things. It's something that I think is important. Okay. Well, hey, Sarnbolus, it's been a pleasure. Um, on on that note, we'll we'll wrap it up. I do before before we we go. What's your smoothie recipe? Because now I'm intrigued. So share your smoothie recipe <laughs> oh. with with the world, so everybody knows if they want to be like you. What what what's the go to? And this is at breakfast. You at breakfast? Yeah. Okay. So well, actually, it depends. But uh, but yeah. So uh, I've got two. Um, so it's a it's a cherry and mango okay. combo. Um, so cherries, and mangoes with. Um, are, they, are they tart cherries? Just normal cherries. Tart. I think. Dark cherries. Dark cherries. Okay, yeah. I got gotcha. um, Get it at Costco. Super, super cheap, super yeah, easy. Yeah. Um, and uh, and then um, like a, a tablespoon of chia seeds, uh, some coconut milk or coconut water. Um, it, it just finds that it, it tastes a little bit better that way um, with uh, a little bit of honey, just a little bit. Uh, and uh, some Sun Warrior protein or whatever your like mm -hmm. vanilla or vanilla based protein choices and and that's pretty much it um i like it you've got some yeah. you've got some carbs in there you've got some fiber you've got some good fat you've got some anthocyanins from the cherry some antioxidants uh in there um so yeah no that's a great way to start the day i endorse that <laughs> so so thanks so much again for for being on the podcast it's been an absolute pleasure and, and thanks for actually starting this podcast because again this was this was uh, your idea, you just had to make me see it, uh, and and I appreciate it. Yeah. Um, we'll, we'll probably have to have you back on because uh, uh, I've, I've, I've got even more questions I jotted down as we were talking, but uh, we'll wrap up for today. Um, thanks for, for listening to us. Again, if you're a future dietitian out there, you want to learn how to be a 65 Charlie, go to the Baylor Army Graduate Program of Nutrition. We'll put that link at the bottom. If you want to be a 68 whiskey, I'm sure we can put the recruiter. You can find your recruiter out there uh, yeah. to, to do that as well. Um, but until next time, I uh, hope everyone has a great day. Thank you.